There was contact made by the uh, plaintiff to the defendant, Cyber Promotions, and Cyber Promotions says, look, this, we, we have the, the right to the First Amendment. We're, we're out here soliciting business, and uh, you, know, you don't have the right to stop us. So there was a, a series of, of movements, a series of activities where uh, there was this contact and they, they, their refusal to, to stop, and this, this went on and on. Now, the court in this case goes on to a, 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 a very interesting discussion about the creation of the Internet and uh, how it works, and basically uh, says that the Internet is not a physical or tangible entity, but rather a giant network which interconnects innumerable, innumerable smaller groups of linked computer networks. It is a network of networks. And it goes on to talk about the fact that uh, the case is here because there was originally a... Uh, a temporary restraining order. When a temporary restraining order is something that's, that you should know about, I mean, it's a uh, it's a form of injunctive relief. It's equitable relief, and basically, it's something that's that's done immediately. That's when you know, you, let's say you have a, uh, a an immediate problem, like a, a a very old tree in your neighborhood. It's about to be cut down. It has some sort of historic uh, significance, and you don't have time to wait for the long process. So you can go into the court get what's called a temporary restraining order to get immediate relief or an immediate restraint and the the judge will sign it and uh, you can you know serve that upon the defendant to get them to stop cutting down the tree uh, now after that there can be a, a preliminary injunction and a preliminary injunction is something that's a bit longer that's an injunctive injunction injunctive relief in which uh, there's a longer period of time during which the uh, defendant is ordered to stop doing whatever it is that they're doing and finally, there's a permanent injunction, and the permanent injunction is what's being sought in this case. And the uh, plaintiff wants the defendant to permanently stop sending the spam to the plaintiff's uh, uh, clients. Uh, so there's, there's there's that discussion, and and as I said, uh, there's this uh, a full uh, a dissertation here about uh, the ungoverned nature of the internet. That it's it's something that's com completely. Uh, uh, ephemeral and it's, 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 it's a, a network of networks of, of all these different independent uh, network groups and this junk email called spam is the bane of their existence their clients often complain about it um, and uh, there's you know screening software that CompuServe used and the uh, the bad the, the defendants uh, found some way of, of getting around the uh, the use of that of, of that uh, screening software and, and other things that they did. So they finally said, "Look, enough of this. We're going into court." So uh, the uh, CompuServe company moved for a preliminary injunction on the common law theory of trespass to personal property. Now, when you hear the, the term trespass, you often think of some kind of physical land, where, as we commonly know, a trespass is a person who goes on someone's property without permission. Well, trespass also applies to the law of personal property. So if someone has a, an internet network and someone else is coming with spam on their internet network, they consider that to be a trespass. So that was the, uh, the argument that was, that was uh, being uh, argued here. And um, the court says that its, it's chief import, importance now is in, in terms of recovery for interference with the possession of chattels which are not sufficiently important to be classified as conversion as to compel the defendant to pay the full value of the thing with which he has interfered. The court goes into a um, discussion about the, the difference between uh, one form of relief and another. And um, in order to constitute conversion, necessary there should have been an actual appropriation of the uh, property. And um, the court uh, continues by talking about the restatement. And very often you will see in these cases a discussion of the restatement. There's a, rest there's a restatement of all the major uh, subjects you'll be studying in law, so there's a restatement of torts. Uh, the restatement second is, is cited here. And very often what the court does is it'll go to the restatement uh, not only for a scholarly view of what this area of law is, but in, in situations like this where you're going to new territory, uh, you go to the restatement because there may not be actual case pre uh, precedents, you go to the restatement and the court will look at the restatement and find out the general area, the general concept of law that uh, the restatement identifies. Uh, and of course the courts found uh, some precedents concerning hackers. Uh, electronic signals generate, generate and sent by a computer have been held 
to be uh, sufficiently physical, tangible to support a trespass. And uh, they found another case involving uh, unauthorized access computer. And, you know, the court goes in, uh, into a detailed discussion of these, these other cases. Uh, one who commits a trespass to a chattel is subject to liability to the possessor of the chattel if, but not only if, he disposes of the other chattel or has impaired his condition or deprived the use of the chattel or bodily harm is caused to the possessor. And in this case, what happened was the court determined that uh, CompuServe is diminished even though it is not physically damaged by the defendant's conduct. Uh, the restatement is cited, the restatement indicates that recovery may be had for a trespass that causes harm to something in which the possessor has a legally protected interest. And of course, in this case, CompuServe had a legally protected interest in the, the, the business it's conducting. It is uh, uh, the business of providing this service to its client, and they want to protect that interest. The, res the reason that the tort of trespass and chattels requires some actual damage as a prima facie evidence element, according to the court, uh, is assumed is that uh, whether it's trespass or real, uh, real property can be explained as follows. And the court goes on to, to talk about the interest of a possessor in, in, in chattel uh, and comes to the conclusion that one who intentionally intermeddles with another's chattel is subject to liability only if his intermeddling is harmful to the possessor's materially viable interest, valuable interest in the physical condition, quality, or value of the chattel. And that was the, 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 the basic finding of the court. The, the court said, uh, th this, this is our, our decision here. We, we, we believe that this interference with the internet workings of the, of the plaintiff was sufficient to present, uh, to, 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 to bring a, uh, this litigation, and uh, they, they awarded the injunction.